we'll see if they'll go up in there. There we go. There we go. Okay. Oh. Hey, what's up, big guy? You're not gonna do any sniffing, are you? <laughs> that time of the year. We're just in breeding season, so I'm just gonna let them do their thing. Golly, that's gotta hurt. It hurts me to watch that. I literally just walked out here with this paddle. The males all went together and the females went their own way. Okay, so now I'm out here hanging out with the yearlings. You guys have seen me spend some time out here. One reason is because of this water. You can see still been hanging out in it, raking that water out on them. I went and got the green tub. I got some feed in it today. I got three tons of our four-way blend. And the reason I got some more feed in it is because I'm gonna separate the bulls, our yearlings, out of here. So there's five yearling bulls in here. We went and bought some, remember back when we went to Missouri. We also bought some heifers too as well. I'm gonna use them for breeding. They're not ready to breed right now. I know some of you are like, Dunbar needs more ladies. Well, I know he does, but yearlings aren't old enough to uh, breed yet. So they have to be two years old to breed. But what I have to do is I've got to try to get these females out of here and I'm gonna let them out in the big herd and I'm gonna actually let them out uh, where I just brush hogged this Bermuda grass and then the big herd will be able to mix in with them. So I'm gonna let these yearling heifers go. Some of them have never even been with the big herd before. So there's no sense to have these heifers in here anymore. We can let them out and let them do their thing and graze heavy with the big herd. Get them out on this Bermuda that I just ran these strips on to test that project and see if they like that short grass. Oh, I've gotta figure out how to cut these guys real quick. And when I say cut, that just basically means work them, separate them and, into different pens and break them apart basically is all this i'm not physically cutting them but cutting them uh we're just uh working them basically so all right Let's see what we can do this is eleanor's calf this guy he's always up to something you need to shed your hair you guys follow that bull right there i appreciate it boys are going with the boys perfect that's three need a couple more here comes one i think they're communicating because i put some poured some feed in there so it'd hold them up keep them busy last bull right here i'd really like to get lumpy in but he's a little bit more difficult Guys, I'm gonna tell you something right there. It's one of the easiest cutting jobs I've ever done. The fourth one's back there somewhere, but I got him. The only one I'm missing is Lumpy. So if you guys don't recognize this, this is where we actually work the bison. This is their U-shape right here, and they go down the alley and into the squeeze chute. But we like to keep this gate open always because when the bison come in here, whether we're feeding or they have to come in here for water, it teaches them to come in here all the time if they want access to the corral. That makes it a routine for them. They're used to that so that when we do work them, we can catch them in here and it makes it easier on us. Don't have to go and round them up when we need to go work them. We can just get them in here at the right time and we can pin them up from there, just like I did. Guys, I'm gonna have to be honest with you. That was super easy. Raising bison is not easy, but I just literally walked out here with this paddle There's one of our heifers that we raised. 
I literally just walked out here with this paddle and the males all went together and the females went their own way. The females went in there now with them, but it's okay. I've got another gate. I wanted to get the females in there uh, because there's an, a lane that we use that we can uh, get them out directly to the big pasture, but we may just use this gate right here, right there. That was way too easy and it doesn't always go that way i promise sometimes you just gotta have a little luck and patience sometimes these animals will just go you know if you just show them in the right direction lumpy's hanging out back here i really need him uh kind of started some uh some new uh ideas with lumpy i'm gonna keep you guys updated on but uh, i'll just quickly do it while i'm separating them but I talked to Oklahoma State University, my alma mater. We may work something out to help Lumpy. We may make some moves on Lumpy's hernia. And uh, I'll keep you updated on it. But after talking to a doctor from Oklahoma State, we may start kind of moving in the right direction to see if, if we can possibly help Lumpy's hernia. Possibly. I'll keep you guys updated from there. My wife and I got to make a decision if that's the direction we want to go with him but I will let you know and keep you updated if you guys want to see if we can get this hernia taken care of for him. So we'll keep you updated, but let's get these uh, females out. Try to. What's up Dunbar? Fellas. You probably want to know what's going on, don't you? Working on it. What's up, big guy? So the idea is, this is where Dunbar and those two ladies are. I like to get them in this lane. This is where we also worked Dunbar and Big Joe to get them separated and switched. Um, you guys probably recognize it. This is where they met right here. You can go back and watch a couple of videos of the bull challenge, the bull swap challenge. But this is really green grass and it, they, it grabs their attention. They like hanging out in here. I've got the bulls in here now, which is, they're locked away, that's perfect. Still need to get lumpy, but he's gonna be, he's gonna be his own project. Now you get these females in here and we can send them straight out to the big pasture, which they'll be able to join Big Joe and the big females. They're ready to go in. That's little Quapaw Heifer. Hopefully she'll go find the grass. This is the heifer that Noah gave us right here. She's pretty chill too. Let's go out here and see if we can get these last two looking rounded up and that's where Lumpy is. Come on. Ladies and Lumpy, they may naturally just go to that area. They may not. Let's see who the leader is going to be here. Let's see, just give them a little bit of time. I hear Brooks crying. Oh, we need it. 
now we gotta go shut the gate before they realize what's going on. There we go. Perfect. This is where we want them. We got bulls here. Got the females here. The only unperfect situation is our boy over here. Mr. Lumpy. Gotta get him out. Got him. There he is. Little skittish. All right, Lumpy's with the bulls. So next move, just put the green feeder out. So I'm gonna let the bulls in there so they can have access to the feed and they can graze some too. We're gonna keep the females in here and we're gonna let them out into the big pasture out that lane where that orange gate is just like where we let big joe out Alright fellas, you're set free again. Come on, you guys can go. Let them figure it out. All it takes is one. You too, Lumpy. You can go too. Hang in there, buddy. All right, so here's the next strategy. These females are gonna run past me whenever I get down there in a tight area. This is probably not safe if they're adult animals. They're gonna stop here and I'm gonna come back and we'll get them out in the big pasture and let them uh, do what they're doing right now and graze. So I'm going to ease down here and try to open this orange gate. Hey, Dunbar. Easy, ladies. Just coming by you. That gate just needs a little bit of love. It's been uh, thrown off the hinge a couple of times by Dunbar. <laughs> Broken by Dunbar. Shocking, right? All right, I'm gonna let these females out into the pasture. All right, now I need you to come back. You guys are having fun grazing. But... side because it's paneled a little safer to exit all right let's see what freedom looks like this again oh that's fun actually when you 
have an idea of a plan. I told my wife what I wanted to do and what my idea was. And luckily it just worked out. Like I said, luckily. But this is why we do this. Is so that this is why we spend a lot of time with our bison and hanging out with them is so that we can handle them that way. They're not bouncing off the pins and, and, and going crazy. We're able to do that. I'm able to do that because Kevin and I spend time with them and it makes it easy on us easier on us when we do this. Yeah, that was fun. Let's check out the big man right here. He always wants to know what's going on. He's got to check everything out. He's nosy. I don't blame him, right? Hey guys, I just want to thank you for watching. Just doing bison ranching. I don't know what else to call it really, but uh, now the cool part about this is I just knocked two, two birds with one stone right here. We've got these out here. They're going to mix with the big herd eventually. We've got to get the big herd up here, the big jolt herd. They're kind of way down on the bottom right now. We'll get them up here and mix with these females. No, they cannot breed. They're too young. They're yearlings. You gotta be two years old to reach the breeding stages. But the other part is this is where I just brush hogged those lanes, like I said earlier, and we'll test and see if they're really hitting this low Bermuda, kind of right in the middle of this hot summer. Anyways, guys, it's fun just doing all this stuff. And uh, like I said, I'm able to do this because we spend so much time with these animals. I know on the big ranches, it, it's hard to do this and it's different. Mine is, this is a small bison ranch and uh, on the big places, it's way different. And you've probably watched some of my videos of, of us going to do some of that and some of the places of the field trips I've been on. I hope to continue to do that too, by the way, but also guys got a new hat. Yes, we came out with the shirt, uh, Pioneer of the Plains. A couple months ago now i've got a hat created and i think this is pretty cool it's a got a little native color to it so you can check the hats out at crosstimmersbison.com it's online right now guys anyways thank you guys for watching us and i uh, hope you enjoy the videos subscribe to us guys you can follow us along raising these awesome animals here this was a calf raised here on the ranch our second year of calves and i mean look at her she's just come up here and saying hi she wants back in here where the fresh grass is but i'm not gonna let her <laughs> see oh no get back get back she wants in here where she just came from but thank you guys for watching us Let's go check the Big Joe herd. I got Marissa, one of her best friends, Sam with us, and baby girl Brooks. So they're gonna stay in the truck. We're gonna leave that air conditioner going because it's hot. And Brooks, uh, Brooks gets hot pretty easy. So we're gonna go check the Big Joe herd, and make sure they're doing good. Seeing who Big Joe's following now. doing good.
He's thinking. Check this lad out. Oh, it's Mr. Dunbar. Yep, cooling off. Just like the yearlings, been getting in the tub. They do drink out of it, but they also have the tire too, the automatic water system. But the big guy here, he loves getting in these tubs and cooling off. He hadn't changed much. This guy. I didn't mention it, but I know I just passed 100,000 subscribers. I need to give a lot of credit to this guy right here. Dunbar, as you know, is one of the popular bison of my channel. You got Eleanor, Dunbar, and Big Joe. I need to get a lot of credit to him, but he's done a lot of silly stuff for me, and uh, he's just full of character. Dunbar, if you guys have followed me along, I've got some good footage of Dunbar when he was just a, just a yearling he's dunbar hasn't changed his character has always been the same and he's just this silly old bull in case you guys are wondering he's four years old now he's still young these guys don't hit full maturity until about they're six years old big joe just turned seven so like i said big joe's in his prime and i know you guys have been thinking he's lonely he's lonely well no he's not he's got plenty to hang out with i promise we're in here right now because they're they come in because they think I'm going to feed them. But they've been out here grazing and doing their thing. But Dunbar here, he still has a ways to go. I want you guys to know he is not alone. Oh, there's our feisty kit right there. See, here's one of the reasons I want you guys to understand kind of what we're doing. We didn't want to divide up the, the cows plus one reason as it was gonna be really difficult for us to do. So we just completely swapped the bulls. We're trying to get that usage out of Big Joe, kind of why he's in his prime. And we do like how big he is right now. We don't know how big Dunbar will be. Like I said, he's only four years old, so he still has a ways to go. He does have great genetics though, because he comes from Canadian River Bison, which is Doc Gerald Parsons from Stratford, Oklahoma. I got my first five animals from him and he raises top-notch animals and so that's what we've got here out of Dunbar so guys I want you to understand Dunbar's not going anywhere he's my guy he's 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 kind of my big baby I'm gonna lean on him for a lot I'm just switching things up Big Joe has been with these two females for a long time with Kit and Flo but we wanted to change it up and see if we could get Big Joe to bring some of those other females and and just try from there this is a lot of raising bison right here and some of you may not know this but there is some sort of i don't know if you want to call it selective breeding but you can switch up your bulls and see here's the thing we've only got seven females in the big joe herd we've only got two right here in the dunbar herd if i had 30 or 40 females yes we could put dunbar and big joe in the same pen now I, or in the same pasture, we could put them together. I don't want to do that right now because they're they're going to compete for nine females, and 
that's not enough females for these males, these two dominant males to compete against each other for us. That's why we don't do that. That's why we don't put those bulls together. They would fight a lot, which is natural, but they would possibly tear down our fences and all that. But if I had a bunch of females, which my plan is someday to do have, and uh, we'll be able to do that. We'll have to have two bulls in there and the dominant bull who wins the battle between the two will be breeding most of the females. And then the bull that's been defeated, the less dominant of the two will get the rest of the females. And so the, the main part is, is that you want all those females bred so you can have as many babies as possible. Anyways, just want you guys to know, he is not alone. Dunbar is good. He's probably a little mad at me because he's not out with his females he's been with for a long time, but this is just part of it. And it's just something that we're trying and see how it works. We do need to get some more breeding females. I'm kind of looking around. I need some two-year-old heifers is what I need um, so that I can actually put with Dunbar. I'm pretty selective on where I get my animals from. So I just don't just get random bison. I, I try to I try to be selective. I want to know the background and where they're from and whatnot, but I am, I'm always looking for some two-year-old females because right now it's breeding season and Dunbar could, could breed some of them. He's laying down right now and the flies are bad right now. They love the bulls. So I've got my mixture here. See if I can spread on him. He's gonna get up. He's not gonna like it at all. So I'm gonna put the camera up here close. So um, <laughs> see what he does. All right, big dude. Right there on his back. Well, that's just a kiss. Well, that's just a kiss. <laughs> that was a fail. Squirt gun did not have enough pressure. That was rank a dink. There it goes. Now he's mad at me. You guys want to know about the fish experiment? Just came down here to look and got a couple floaters. But I probably know the reason why is it's getting definitely hot here. What I'm amazed about is how big these suckers have gotten. I mean, they were no bigger than my wedding band. <laughs> when we first got them. So they've definitely gotten big, but I did see some actual ones in here swimming a while ago. So good and bad sign at the same time, <laughs> but uh, we'll take it, I guess. That's why it's called an experiment. Guess who it is? Looky here. We haven't seen her in a while, but. What do we got? It's Eleanor. Doing good, she's looking good. Hey, Eleanor. All right. Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Turners Bison. Welcome back to the Bison Channel, raising the American Bison. You wanna know anything about bison, you can come right here to Cross Turners Bison. We've, we don't know it all, but in a short three years, we've learned a bunch, I tell you what. But uh, yeah, part of being on a farm, you guys know if you've uh, been a part of a farm or raised on a farm, there's always, always work to do. Today, I've gotta to get the rest of our hay. We've already got one cut. Now this place, this is not Cross Timbers Bison Ranch. This is the Arms Family Homestead. I get some of my hay cut 
at the Arvin Family Homestead place. And the same guy that cuts our hay at, the, at our bison property also cuts the hay here too. This is just more hay that we need to get us through the winter time. I got an actual round bale trailer I rented from GP. I've only got 20 here. Hopefully we'll get another cut. The past couple of years we've been able to get two cuts, which is nice. So I can get roughly about 40 bales of hay just from Daniel's property. And then when we get about 13 or 15 from our bison ranch. So I'm gonna start loading these up. The interesting thing is we've got some challenges today. This is not a flat level ground out here at the Arms Family Homestead. I'm diving through creeks, going up creeks, through the woods. And so this should be fun, uh, needless to say. But um, I wanna use this trailer and try to get them all on there. So let's get to rocking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bales on here. Probably got enough room for one more. I just don't think Daniel's tractor is uh, heavy enough to push them all up here. We'll go with this. Seven, that's not bad. Well, we got our first load after a little bit of, a couple obstacles of the creek life. A couple challenges I thought I was gonna go through and did, so. It's a little bit more difficult out here than I thought it was. Hauling hay, big round bales of hay, needless to say. So, I'm gonna take this over to the bison ranch. Kevin's gonna help me stack the bales, so let's go see the bison, see how they're doing. Down by our way to a little post up tree here. Some leaves. Oh, yeah, good stuff. Hey there. You guys think about my hat? I'm a little sensitive about wearing this hat. Maybe a little insecure. Not much of a cowboy hat guy, but Kevin told me I should uh, show you guys my new cowboy hat. Brooks and I went and visited the stockyards down in Oklahoma City. I said, went in the store and I said, hey man, dude, I just want a hat to cover my face and skin. When you get older, you gotta think about stuff like that. You know, don't want cancer on your ears. I coached for 10 years and blasted by the sun. You get older, you start worrying about that stuff. So, tired of being sunburnt, my pale skin. So, got me a cowboy hat, $45, shaped it for me and everything. So, you guys take it easy on me. I don't wear cowboy hats that often, but I do wear caps all the time. So, we'll see how it goes. Hey, if I can protect my face and skin and all that good stuff, that's all that matters, right? That's all that matters. Changing some stuff up here across the creek earlier. Got a little uncomfortable, needless to say. 
I did not like it. Got a little tight down on one of these low water crossings where the hay is across the creek, pulling this across there and it got a little tight. Had some wheels hanging off the edge of the creek bank. Uh, almost lost the, all the bills. And so uh, I made a quick adjustment, put her in full drop, got the heck out of there. But anyways, got the first load over to the bison. I don't have very many more bales of hay, but this time bring them over here, load them up, drive them up that big creek where it's a little steep. It's just part of it when you're getting hay out of the bottom, like the woods, it ain't gonna work. And it's good hay too. These are big old round bales of hay. They're probably weighing maybe about a thousand pounds or so. Round two. Daniel, what are you doing out there? This is one of my favorite things about using these hay trailers. Watch this. Always have been. Well, we got the hay stacked. Finally, took a while with the Arms Family Homestead. Couple roadblocks you gotta go around there, but um, it's just nice to have a hay somewhere close and you, you got a relative that can uh, supply hay. I have the same guy that cuts our hay go out there and he cuts that hay. Daniel doesn't need very many bills of hay. He uses it for goats and his alpacas and a couple of his critters, but I use most of it, so I just, I just pay for it and I buy the hay right there. So this is just a portion of what we'll use here at the ranch. It's just part of it. Everybody has to do this in the wintertime or unless you have some miraculous fields and you plant a lot of stuff like rye or wheat during the wintertime. But we don't do that here. We are very lucky to have good hay here in Oklahoma. It's not a problem. Like I know I follow some bison people up north and I know they have to travel a lot of miles and they have to pay a lot of money to get hay because there's just not a lot up there. As much as there is here, we have lots of prairie hay, which is what this is, a lot of natural grass, Johnson grass, things like that. So very lucky that it's not that expensive of a product because it's right here on our property. So, okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I've got this whole trough, it's heavy duty. I'm gonna take it down to uh, since I got the tractor out, I'm gonna take it down to the big herd, the big Joe herd. I'm gonna put some of our Redman minerals out, our loose minerals that we always use. I'm gonna use our trough here, move it down to the pasture. Part of their rotation, I need to be putting minerals out. I haven't been very good about it, but I need to put some Redman minerals out. I think I'm gonna put garlic out. A lot of you have been asking me about how do you keep the flies off? You notice in some of my videos, I've got Dunbar and Big Joe are fighting the flies. All the bison are, but they really like those bulls.
I don't know if they're gonna like that mineral or not. Calves seem to like it. Well, it likes to get in the trough anyways. At least it's good for something. Look out, those little calves. They, this is where they start to look funny. They're starting to lose that color. Starting to lose that red dog color and start to molt and look like mama and daddy. They look a little scroungy right now. It's summertime and it's hot. They're doing a lot of grazing right now, but these minerals can help. Whatever they're not getting from the grass, the minerals hope to make up the difference is what that's for. So I didn't put it very far away from the gate. Just so if we need to put some more in, we can put some more in pretty easy. You don't have to go far down the pasture to do it. But the calves are always the ones that seem to like it the most at first, but this one's got garlic in it, so it may throw my bison off a little bit. What I'll do is kind of see how the garlic goes and see if they're actually licking it and actually ingesting it. And then I can come back and hit them with some bison 90 selenium. Thank you guys for watching. You get to see, uh, I'm always doing something. And uh, it may not be out here hanging out with the bison, but it's always pertaining to the bison. Uh, we're always trying to improve, and then we're just taking care of the bison. It's just ranch life. Uh, a lot of it's not very much different than cattle ranching. So, well, somebody else is in heat. Check it out right there. It looks like uh, it's chasing peaches now. Oh, the red rocket's hanging out too. So, um, that's a good sign. Last time I was here, uh, the first couple of signs was Quapaw right here. It looks like he's done soloing her out. Then it was Bell Star. Now it looks like it's peaches. So, uh, that's a good sign that. These females are coming in heat if they already haven't been in heat. I like it, Big Joe. Keep doing your thing, big buddy. Oh, look at them. They've been reaching through the fence. <laughs> Grazing on this uh, blue stem. Yeah, blue, blue stem's good grass right here. Good grass. And there you go. She's definitely in heat. Got the smell, the snarling of the of the nose and stuff right there. It's always a good sign. We're just in breeding season, so I'm just gonna let them do their thing. But thank you guys for watching us. If you haven't, subscribe to us. Follow us along, guys, raising these American bison right here, wearing my cowboy hat, looking goofy and all. You just gotta put hay up for the winter getting ready for that the worst thing you you don't want in the winter time is to not have enough hay and last year we ran into some cold arctic blast weather lots of snow that we're not used to and you never know when that can happen that storm is pretty rare but you always you want to have more hay uh, than you need and so working on getting that done hopefully we'll get another cut off of this it's looking good so far i love this blue stem that is that is a big time native grass here in Oklahoma and a lot of places in this area. Got some Johnson grass out here. Hopefully we'll get another cut of this and we'll just add it to the stockpile of prairie hay that we'll need in the winter time and in the early spring. So thank you guys for watching us.
Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. As you can tell here, I'm hanging out in what I like to call, it's like the gauntlet area or something. It's like the, uh, like the UFC cage, but of, of the bison worlds. This place is where it gets a little wild. It gets a little crazy. It's sometimes a little unpredictable. This is the working area. This is where the people stand typically. Now there's been a couple of bison in here, but don't let me fool you. A Dunbar has been in here and maybe one or two others have been in here. You know, stuff happens and sometimes they get in the working areas where the people are. That's the process of trial and error when you start working bison in your first couple of years of raising bison. Yes, uh, but this is where a lot of crazy action happens. You can go back and watch my videos of us working the bison and see my wife getting panicked over uh, the bison. She's trying to get the bison back in one of our kit, my little, little crazy feisty one, trying to get uh, her back in. We've worked Big Joe and finally got him to go through here, part of their tub. It, Dunbar's got out, he's broke a head gate. I mean, everything always goes perfect here. As you can tell on the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch, working bison we work them twice a year but something i've been wanting to do for a long time let's just get to the chase here right here i'm going to spray paint this right here i i, I care about our equipment i try to take care of as much as I can and with bison it's got to be heavy duty it's got to be tough secure stuff but i just want to clean it up i want to protect this metal so i'm going to put some rust-oleum primer on it and we're going to use that i've got a sprayer right here that i use at the cabins quite a bit to spray this and so that's what i'm going to do is i'm going to spray this down and get this baby ready for the fall and just get it looking better to take care of this metal. I'm gonna start down here in the corner, kinda just a, just a easy place to start instead of starting in the middle and see how this goes. I've got it primed up and ready, so uh, wish me luck and see how the application goes on. Kind of surprised it's going on pretty good. Handy little dude, better than out of a can. I'm gonna go ahead and attack this inside too. So far the outside's going pretty well. 
Guys, I'm not a professional. I know you're probably going, Dusty, do this, do that, do that. You're doing this wrong. Hey, at least I'm getting something on there. This rust oleum to protect what's already here. So, especially this stuff, because it's a little bit thinner than that pipe. This is 14 or 16 gauge uh, sheets of metal. So it's gonna keep lathering on. you guys don't recognize this area this is the area where big joe kept getting stuck we had to put that panel that i just removed up here still got to put a sheet of metal here i know this stuff is wearing out. i was just trying to black it out i'm going to rip all this off put another sheet of metal there we put that panel here and finally got him to go straight down the alley here and into or down the lane tub whatever you want to call it and into this area once we got him here he went straight through and through these sliding gates, shut the gates, and it all worked pretty well once he got through here. Went ahead and painted these sheet metal gates that we have here. This is a 10 foot one. Um, I may not have to paint this one. You guys may recognize this one. I don't think I'll be painting this one. I don't know how much use we're gonna get out of this one. This is uh, this is the one Big Joe uh, tore apart in a whole couple minutes or so. know if I'm get the right angle for you but that sucker is bent I think it looks pretty good once it dries it has that nice clean finish to it next I'm going right down the lane here getting this covered So, what's really great about this whole handling system is this barn right here. We built this barn, Austin and I, part of Get Her Done Construction, with the help of Kevin too. We, uh, we built this barn last summer. I think it was June or July, it was hot as heck. But we got this barn built and it's made a huge difference. Uh, we've been able to store the welder in here, minerals, all kinds of stuff in here. Plus we've got lights, so, that helps if we need to do some work out here or what or we've got bison issues at night so but the great thing about this handling system is it's under this and your equipment will last a lot longer this looks good right now so we'll see how the inside goes um and then i'll be done
man, that is a chore. The worst part about painting is the cleanup afterwards. You gotta drain the lines and do all that stuff, clean everything. That's the biggest pain in the butt. Woo, take a look here. This is awesome. It looks really good. I don't know how well you guys can see it from this point, but I think it looks really good. And I was getting a little worried about it. I was like, man, I'm not a very good painter. It's leaving some streaks and that may have been my nozzle, but it just finished out really good. Kind of has that matte look to it. Now, this is just the primer. What I can do now that I have the primer on is I can come back and I can put whatever color I want on it specifically. Besides it looking good, we got rust oil on it. We got some protection on it. We got some gates painted as well, and which is important because I, I like to hang sheet metal on a lot of these gates. So sliding gates covered. We're good to go. I, I slid them just to make sure there was no paint sticking to it or anything, but that little sprayer is pretty handy. It's nothing fancy. It's just from Harbor Freight, but it did what I needed it to do. All right. Well, there you go, guys. Next time you see this place, we will be working bison. It'll be in the fall, usually around October, November is when we work our bison. So um, stay tuned for that. It'll be a while, be a couple months. But uh, obviously when it's cooler, this is where we'll work them is right here. And you'll see a little bit of a different look when the bison come through here. That may be impressed. I don't know. They probably don't care. But anyways, I was able to spray. This is the crash gate. This is where I had a couple of problems with it, but nothing too bad. Got a foremost head gate here. Got to have crash gates for bison because they like to just run through it and this will slow them down so that we can actually catch them with the head gate right here. Guys, if you want to, you can go back and see how we work the bison. Every year, I feel like it gets better and better and that's just part of learning. And hopefully this year goes well again. So thank you guys for watching us. If you haven't subscribed to us, guys, follow us along. Raising these American bison, putting the work in for these guys. Thank you. I've always wanted to try this. I saw a guy do this one time. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker, Cross Turners Bison. Welcome back to our channel. I'm gonna come down here and do something that I don't get to do very often. I'm gonna show you guys Eleanor. I'm gonna hang out with Eleanor a little bit. I, I kinda, I don't forget about her, but I just don't spend that much time with her. She kind of is a, she just does her own thing. She's kind of by herself most of the time. You can kind of see the herd there, the main herd, and she's right here hanging off by herself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some cubes. I actually brought her a couple apples. I've heard that bison will eat apples. So I sliced up some apples for her. Just kidding. Um, and see if she'll eat an apple. Eleanor, get your butt over here. Before the big herd does, you're gonna screw up. Come on. Come on, girl. Mm -hmm. It's about time. Come here. There you go. Hey, girl. I'm gonna try this apple. She ate it. Nope, nope, she didn't. And that's what happens. She gets ran off by the by the boss right there, Queen Bee. I tried to feed Eleanor, but she, as you saw there, she got kicked around by the big herd. She doesn't like being um, up close to them very much. That's why she kind of singles herself out because they. Uh, She's the runt of the group, unfortunately, but uh, she is the smallest one, so she's at the low end of the totem pole. But now she's uh, figured out I can go around this fence into this other paddock and uh, 
she knows what's in the green bucket. Hey, girl. Yeah. Pretty thing. See, she's always watching behind her to see if anybody else is coming, but nobody's coming. It's just me and you. Hey, little little heifer. Throw you some. They can't get to you. Eat my whole bucket. I've always wanted to try this. I saw a guy do this one time. <laughs> oh boy. See, I was up here a little earlier and I already fed the main herd. I gave them some cubes and I came to check on them. But Eleanor, she's wise and has, she knows how I am and knows how when she sees Kevin or I, she can take advantage of it and she can get her some cubes. So she went all the way around and down, separated herself from the herd because there's a fence between them and she, uh, she's a smart girl for sure. It's good to... Have a little boost in there, Eleanor. She 
she looks good other than that. I think maybe, so Eleanor didn't have a calf this year, but I think she was in heat when we let her go after we worked the bison in April. We put her out with the big herd. You can go back and watch that video of, of us getting her back with, it was the Dunbar herd at, at the time, but then we switched Big Joe out. I think she was in heat then, and so uh, she's pretty full right now. She looks pretty good. You know, Eleanor is just a, she could be pregnant. I don't know. She may already be pregnant. Dunbar may have already bred her for now so she could be pregnant for all we know but she has had a calf before i know some of you are like gosh she's so small yeah she is small she is a different bison i don't even know how you explain it but she is just a different bison what i'm just doing right there you can't always do that with a lot of bison so those of you who are watching and think that you can go out and actually do that with um, just any bison you can't so I probably wouldn't try a lot of the things that I do. I'm on the other side of a gate with her, as you can tell, but it's something that you don't want to try because not all of our bison, even my bison, not all the bison that you may see are like Eleanor. She's very special. She's very unique. As you can tell, that's just how she is. And she's always been that way. I would feel comfortable being out in the pasture with her, but alone but other than that you can't do that with all the bison so just a little disclaimer there for you guys to understand about eleanor she's just a different different animal whoa look out Hey guys, thank you for watching today. I know it wasn't a lot of exciting stuff, but you know what? Sometimes it's just good to take time out just to see the bison. I know you guys are big bison fans and love just watching and seeing the bison. I can come down here and just hang out with them and, and just watch their behaviors and watch Big Joe right now um, trying to court some of these females. It's just fun to do that. I love seeing the calves changing colors on a daily basis and just hanging out with these awesome animals. You just got to take time and I should appreciate them. And I hope that you guys enjoy it, especially our unique one right here, Eleanor. She's just one of a kind, like I've always said. Anytime you can give her some special attention and a shout out, then um, I know you guys like Eleanor. And so I just um, wanted to give you an update on her and show you, uh, show you the love that she gets around here. Even though she's at the bottom, totem pole here i know she's at the bottom of the hierarchy system but she gets lots of love and plenty of attention i promise you from us so look at the big guy so i don't have nothing to do with you i'm busy thank you guys for watching What's up, Eleanor? Oh, here they all come.
Look at the big guy come through here. Whoa. Hey, what's up, big guy? You're not going to do any sniffing, are you? <laughs> that time of the year. Golly, that's got to hurt. It hurts me to watch that. And I don't have an udder. Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Raising these American Bison. Right here. Locally grown, locally raised bison in southern Oklahoma. I'm back down here with the Big Joe herd. My big herd. I've got seven females. The big stud here, Big Joe. Our seven-year-old bull got five calves down here i've got two bull calves and three heifer calves the flies are terrible right now it's been really dry here the past month and a half or so but we got just a little bit of rain a little bit of moisture and what comes with that is it's like somebody opened opened up the world to the flies and so the flies just come running when that moisture hits and we've got some rain coming in the next couple of days so I'm gonna do a little bit of fly preventive today. I'm gonna to do something I've never done. I'm, I'm gonna to try to spray the big guy here with uh, uh, some Prolite Lintox. It's a concentrate that I have mixed up for uh, with water. Oh man, pushing away them calves from the mamas so he can uh, breed them. So I'm gonna to try to squirt some directly on some of these bison. They're not gonna like it. I don't know how he'll react. Last year I did that to Dunbar and he, uh, he freaked out. It's pretty funny that he's just a character, so he's fine. He needs it. So I'm going to try to spray them while they're up here right now. I'm going to throw them some cubes first so I can kind of get their attention and do that. And then I'm going to go out in the pasture and actually put out some diatomaceous earth. I've used seven dust before and I kind of, I didn't, I don't know if it worked that well, but I want to pull back and, and use some other products. A lot of you guys mentioned diatomaceous earth. Uh, putting on their bison wallers and so I'm gonna do that try to slow down some of these flies so I can spread that out wherever their bison wallers are at they always go to that same spot it's super dusty they've got the ground beat out they'll go back to that and roll in it and dust in it and that's to try to get the flies off them well, Eleanor she's Eleanor that's hay I'm talking about this right now and Eleanor's rolling around in the hay so uh, they'll go back and they'll sit those wallers while well, you can spread some of that diatomaceous earth and they hit it and they roll on it and hopefully that's just a direct contact right there. It's not going to like this. What the heck? This is how this always goes. It never works whenever I need it to. Got it. This is not the first time. You gotta be kidding me. This is flat out embarrassing. I brought this down here, pumped it up, did all this, and now it won't even shoot out. Hey guys, come back. Please.
Sorry. You know, sometimes you got a plan and you get everything set up, but there's one thing that you forget to try. This sucker fails me all the time. And you know what? It doesn't matter what kind of pump you get. There's, these pumps always just suck, but that is direct contact right there. Once I finally got this sucker going, it can shoot pretty darn far. Once you get it to pump, took a couple minutes. By that time, they're already backed off some, but I mean, I sprayed the heck out of Big Joe. He didn't even care. And I noticed the difference that they're not swarming around him near as bad. See right here. I know she doesn't like it at all. But there's a, she's wallering out there right now. But you can get this thing to shoot pretty far. Anything to keep it off of them. And that's direct contact. That's just having them up here but see she's in doing a bison waller right now so i'm gonna go out there and actually put some of this diatomaceous earth on there so that because they all roll around she's going over there rolling the hay because i sprayed the crap out of her oh here comes our here comes our beauty i'm gonna go ahead and spray her too she doesn't care you want to talk about a chained up situation right here. You take no chances when you're working bison. Especially during breeding season. You never know. Things could get a little crazy. Let's go. Come on.
that just got pretty uh, interesting and exciting all in one. <laughs> it's like whenever I came over here, um, it was like they all flocked to me, of course, because they see the, they know that when I'm out here with the green machine, they know there's good things coming. But when I came over here, it was like, oh, this is territorial. Don't come near this. And I started spreading this diatomaceous earth out and they all started rolling in it and getting excited and whatnot. And we've got some hormones going bell star was peeing and and rolling in it too and then big joe roller back into it so a lot of fun stuff happening out here i'm glad i'm by myself in this i know it's dangerous what i do and i try to keep close attention to what i do anyways i'm gonna try to spread some more of this out and uh oh here comes our sweetie hey eleanor you don't have many flies on you today help you out some all right this stuff is messy though i'm not sure what's going on but i got these at the feed store and i don't know where they get them from but they come in these little sacks i don't know if hard times right now or what but uh yeah this will do though it's long as it serves its purpose All right, I'm gonna get out of your way. Really need that patch right here. Okay, buddy. Ooh, features. All right, hey, you're getting way too close. All right, I'm out of. I'm getting out of here. All right, I'll leave. You're calling. kind of see a waller 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 i'm gonna try to spread this out before they get back to me really no great way to do it especially in the sack but To always keep them in front of you. Let's go ahead and put one more here. It looks like they like to go. I'm up here on top of the ATV. This stuff, bad part about it is it gets everywhere. But you can kind of see four areas here where they hit quite a bit. There's one right here, another one. But they like this. This is really dry over here right now. They've grazed this down pretty good. They're able to rotate over here. But you can see the four spots I got going here. Spread all this out. They'll be rolling in it and stuff. But I think it's a little bit safer than seven dust. Maybe not as hazardous. You can still use seven dust, but I've heard from quite a few people you can use uh, diatomaceous earth. Just from me spraying Big Joe, I can already tell the flies have gone away. Now, what I'd have to do, and from her too as well, it's called Paul. What I'd have to do is I'd have to come out here at least once a week to do that sort of application as far as keeping these flies off of them. Uh, that's a lot of direct application. It doesn't always work that way, but having feed, 
they're able to come up and you can get some, uh, you can apply it to them. There's other ways to prevent these flies. There's rubs out there. There's, there's like some serious nice rubs you can put out in the pasture. There's some cattle people that do dips. We, we're not gonna do that bison, no. These are just easy, cheap ways that I can do it by spraying them with a bottle. That Prolate Lintox is not very expensive. You just mix it with water. And then here, setting up just on their wallers that they're gonna hit several times daily. And they're gonna hit all of these more than likely. That's just an easy way to do it. And it's cheap with that diatomaceous earth. We'll see how it goes. We may look out here and see some white uh, all over our bison, but that's okay. We wanna try to slow down the flies. And I literally can already tell the ones that I sprayed, they don't have those big hordes of horn flies. They're actually, they're just horn flies. Uh, they, they're not as bad as they were, which is good. Hey guys, thank you for watching. A little exciting, a little dangerous. Hey, it's part of Cross Timbers Bison. <laughs> uh, you never know what you're gonna get out here. I promise you that. So thank you guys. Something I did want to share with you that I thought about when I was out here. We're gonna, uh, like I told you, my wife and I are getting into another side of the bison business, the meat side of this, which is why we have so many bison today, is because of the healthy meat that these awesome animals provide. Stay tuned with that. I'm gonna be taking some animals up to a processing plant in Oklahoma. I'm gonna be taking three bulls to get processed. These animals, guys, are not the animals that you've seen very much at all. Matter of fact, you haven't seen hardly any. I didn't give them names, I didn't raise them, I purchased them from someone else. They're not any of my home-raised animals, none of these that you've seen, none of the ones that uh, are popular and that you've kept up with. These are uh, just for processing for meat. I'm gonna show you that process of taking them to the plant and all that and just really how all that goes. And then right now, we're trying to get the uh, selling side of it, the business side of it, um, working and operating. And I got some, we've got some exciting stuff coming. So stay tuned for that, guys. Good morning, fellas. Hey, are you back to go, bro? Mm -hmm.
see if they'll go up in there. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right, well, we are, we, me and the three bulls, are headed to Hominy, Oklahoma. Gotta get on the road at 6.30. Kevin and I got them loaded, thankful for him. It's very helpful and they loaded pretty good. So, um, pulling out of the driveway, I got a two hour and 40 minute drive. Here we go. I just made it, just pulling up to the Osage plant. I'm in Osage County, Oklahoma, far northern Oklahoma just outside of Hum and going to the processing facility running a little late but uh, it took me a little longer than I expected but pulling the 24 foot trailer carrying these three bulls so I'm gonna pull up here you guys probably know I can't show you very much of the whole processing side of things but I'm gonna pull up here and I can probably show you the unloading facility and getting unloading these three bulls but other than that can't go can't film inside and nothing like that but i gotta go inside and visit with them and talk about some business stuff just getting here and gonna load these guys stay tuned Everything went smooth, everything went well. During the summer, I can't do much with the hides, although I'd love to do stuff with the hides in the future. Um, I want to, in the winter, they'll be better hides. Definitely the meat, the number one meat. I'll talk to you more about that. I'm gonna head back home, go back to Sulphur. I got a three hour drive, so I'll uh, chat with you when we get home. Thank you guys. Made it back home, everything went good. It's a long drive home. Kind of first time to do this. I know it's not the easiest thing for me to do is to take my favorite animal to a processor but uh, i know i've mentioned this to you before i've talked a little bit about it with the grand canyon slaughtering and i talked a little detail about that but guys here's the deal if we want to see bison populations grow if we want to see the bison world grow then you've got to eat the meat you've got to support the meat and when you do that and you promote the meat and, and all of its health benefits then we'll see more bison that's that's the thing with all of this is that's the key here i always go back to ted turner there's an interview that he has on youtube ted turner owns more bison than anybody in the entire country i don't know how many ranches he has six seven or eight ranches across the western half of the united states montana wyoming i think down even new mexico i'm not really sure but in his interview he talks about one of the important things of why he got started and why he got into this was just the healthy side of this meat. Bison have been around for hundreds of years and provided a lot of meat and a lot of essential parts 
to the Native Americans. We know that and the culture and the history behind that. And we're still living that now. We're, we're still doing that. We're, we're, we're keeping the boss around. It's becoming more and more popular. And guys, it's so healthy. It's high in protein, low in cholesterol, low in fat. Uh, it provides uh, bone marrow, which is sometimes cancer patients are reaching out uh, for that. And it, I guess it's healthy for them as well as what I've heard. And um, I think their doctors recommend eating bison because it's so healthy for them. And guys, that's the reason why we do this. Um, my wife and I have tried to put a business plan together and we're still working on it. It has taken a while. But what I did today, it's just the beginning of something that could be a lot bigger. I'm about this big on a huge bison scale where there's lots of large producers out there in the United States that do the same thing I'm doing, but on larger scales. And I'm just about this big compared to those guys. But it all starts right here by getting those animals in here, taking care of them, and processing them. That's how we keep the bison around. That's how we keep the American bison around is by eating meat. God put that animal here for a great reason, and it provides so much to us in a healthy way. And so as a bison lover, we have to promote the bison that way. And when you do, you'll see our numbers grow. And that's what I'm doing. And you know, I'm all about growing the herd. Just wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. And while we're doing this, we've got some, we still got a lot of work to do. Like I said, I'll keep you updated on everything and, and the process of it and, and what we're doing. Hopefully we'll be able to sell some meat at some point. Got a lot of people local in my town and in my county that are interested in bison and so we'll start there and we've got some other things going maybe some value added products so we'll keep you updated with all that but thank you guys for watching thank you for being a part of this journey and seeing something different on the other side of the bison world that um you don't expect maybe i want to remind you something we will not be slaughtering any of my main herd members dunbar Big Joe, Flo, Kit, Eleanor, any of them, they will not be processed. That is my breeding herd. That is my main herd, and they will not be touched. That is my foundation herd. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed to us and follow us along, Raising the American Bison. Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Thank you for watching. Got our boy back here. Oh, Lumpy. Lumpy's looking pretty good. He's walking with a little limp. I'm not sure if that has something to do with his hernia or not, but there is a couple of things I wanna let you know about. One, Lumpy is going to the vet clinic. A clinic at Oklahoma State. I'm gonna bring you guys along on that journey uh, with Lumpy and I, but he's going to the vet and he is going to get an ultrasound on his hernia. That's the very first step in the process with Lumpy on just seeing if this is even possible to do a surgery on Lumpy. So it should be interesting. I'm not sure what they're gonna see, if they like it or not, but he's doing okay. He's hanging out here in here with the yearling bulls. He is a low man on totem pole, but there's a good shot of the hernia there, but. He shed his winter coat, which is great. That means that there is some healthiness going on. The hernia is not healthy, of course, but if they do shed those coats completely, um, then that's a good sign that he's, everything inside is at least working, as far as I know. That's what I've learned. Get to follow us along for a trip to Oklahoma State, my home away from home, my alma mater, 
we're gonna go up there and they're gonna do ultrasound aim and then we'll go from there so we'll keep you updated with that just want to let you know we are making some efforts for lumpy what are we gonna do with him i don't know to be honest with you we'll just we'll let you know so i was down in the pasture here not too long ago and uh, one of our big water tanks with the big herd big joe herd i've been spending time with them as you can tell a couple of my past videos and then i noticed what i did was i put a barley bag in there i stopped at the feed store not too long ago and they actually had these big barley bags in there and it's a livestock water tank treatment and i've heard these are the best and if, if you guys remember what brooks and i did and my wife we did some water treatment tests on all three of our tanks we did a fish those guys, I think the heat from the Oklahoma summer got the best of those fish. I looked in the other day and I didn't see any left. So fish may not made it. Um, it's just too hot down here. And then we also put the tablet here. Now this is the same water tank where the yearlings, heifers, they were actually in here. Now they're over there. They were here and they kept getting in the water. Matter of fact, all of them kept getting in the water. We got some rain though, by the way, check that out. It's good but um they kept getting in the water being knuckleheads you know how they are you know how they can be well i bought two of these barley bags is my point and i didn't show you putting this one in there because i just kind of want to test it on my own well come to find out it actually worked really well i kind of put it in there and forgot about it and when i was down there i looked into it and I could see the bottom of the tank. It's the first time I've ever seen the bottom of that water tank uh, since I put water in it for the very first time. I was like, heck yeah. So if there's another dirtier tank out of the two that we have it treated left, it's this one because the jack wagons get into it. So I'm gonna actually put this in there because it did so well down yonder where the Big Joe herd is. So um, we're gonna put this in here right now and see how it goes. So I've got some string. I've got to wrap some string around some weight to actually sink it down in there is what you have to do. So I'm just gonna find a good old fashioned rock to sink down in there. But here's our barley. Kind of comes in its own bag wrapped here. But you basically take the barley, put it in this bag. in there there we go string it up Here. can't trust these yearlings there you go that looks good oh dang that's heavy plenty heavy Had to do a little extra reinforcement on it. I had to put some weight on it. These tanks aren't that deep. So I tried to sink it and pull it down, but I had to put that other one, other rock on top of it. So I wanna go show you the difference between the tank that's already had this barley bag in it for about three weeks. Let's go take a look at it. You guys probably can't see this as good as me, but just down here checking the herd again, the big Joe herd. Now they've been rolling in the mud since we got some rain, which is good, but the flies are not near as bad as the last time I came down here. Even though we've got some rain, it still is not near as bad. There were hordes, of, hordes on them over the bison. They still have some. I'm not saying they don't have any, but there are less. Looks like I'll have to put some more diatomaceous earth on, especially after it rained. <laughs> but at least I uh, hope they got some of it on them. We can always apply more. Okay, we're down here in the Big Joe pastures. Got the big herd right here, we're always checking, but here is what we got. Our barley bag, I didn't have anything to sink it with last time I was down here, so. But what I, what I want you to notice is the moss really like growing around this thing. Uh, now don't get me wrong, this isn't, don't get me wrong this is not near as clean as it was the other day i came down here 
that rain must have got it stirred up some i'm sure it did the other day i came down here i could see straight through the bottom they may have been in it sometime today to get it a little murky but it is cleaner definitely than that tank up there that we just looked at but this barley bag just really kind of you can see all that yeah i'm gonna try to find a way to sink this and keep it down in there i don't know how long these last or how long you keep them in there i need to read up a little more on the package here comes eleanor See you've been in the mud. Well, don't hit the fence. It's a big guy. Hey, you got a share. Are you on too, Bell Star? So I literally just checked this with the Big Joe Herd the other day. Take a look at this. This was four days ago. And then... I know it's rained since then, and I do have a drain hole in this old trough here, but there was a whole lot more mineral here, and I know some of it's gonna come out on the ground after rain and whatnot, but that, there's a whole bunch of mineral missing. The flies are still lingering. You can see they're not as bad though, which is good. That hopefully have some positive signs here from Either there's some, she still has some on her, but even though it rained, we should have a lot more, but hopefully this is open. Hopefully the diatomaceous earth helped and the prolate lentox spray that we were using. So you guys are probably wondering, what are we gonna do with these calves? We've got a total of seven calves here. We've got five heifers and we've got two bulls, which is, great that i, I kind of like that ratio to be honest with you and the reason why is if you guys don't already know we want to grow the herd that's one of my main goals is to grow the herd and the best way to do that is with females of course so we're going to keep our heifer calves for sure we don't know what we'll do with our bulls here's the thing and i get this question quite a bit you know what are you going to do with these calves what are you going to do with the bulls well we like we want to see what these bulls look like when they get older remember you've got time the, these are not like cattle you, we don't have steers in the bison world so you don't castrate bison and what we do is at two years old you make a decision one you can slaughter them because they're in that primal weight which is a thousand to twelve hundred pounds is that primal weight when you go to slaughter an animal for meat and then two they start to breed at two years old so you've got two years to really make a decision what you want to do with these calves and we like to take our time with that we like to see how these boys grow up if somebody comes along and wants to purchase some calves that's fine we can sell calves but you know until then we're going to keep them and, and see how things go and see how they look but we're gonna we're happy to keep these heifer calves and 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 basically grow the herd that's the best way to to grow the herd so <laughs> more rolling and, and it's the fun part is, is as the calves get older, you really, how you kind of know what they're going to look like or you hope to what they look like is their mom's traits. They try to take after their mother's traits typically. And so whatever mom looks like is what the baby should look like. And 
we've got some really good mamas here and we hope that some of these mamas that had heifer calves turn out like that as well and you just keep the cycle going now these are dunbar babies these are not big joe babies and some of you are thinking well once they get old enough can they breed back to dunbar yes that's possible you can but most people don't like to do that because they have bigger herds and uh, you have multiple bulls in your herd or your pasture we don't do that to keep them separated dunbar and big joe but big joe in two years will be able to breed these calves these heifer calves that are out here so if that's something that we're doing and big joe is still out here with this plan or whatever goes on he can breed these heifer calves in two years Look who's being nosy, as always. So some of you guys from uh, one of my previous videos uh, giving Eleanor a little bit of extra bit of attention. Um, some of you said, well, put her in another herd. You, you don't like bullies, you know, move her where she can't get hurt or beat around. She's actually been treated fairly well. I haven't really seen the big bunch push her around very much from what I saw. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. However, she is the low man on totem pole. And if I did move her into with the Big Joe herd, there's a feisty mama cow up there and her name is Kit. And if you guys think that she won't be kicked around up there, you're wrong. Kit is very feisty. She's probably my feistiest cow now. So Eleanor, it's a good thing she's down here. She can, she can roam around she can get her distance and if she comes in heat that's great which is what we want but we want her to have distance we want her to be out here and be able to graze and whatnot that's the important thing hey guys just a lot of updates and check-ins with the water tank the minerals the flies see how our diatomaceous earth did then it rains so and our spray did seems like it's doing okay even though we had some rain there's not near as many flies as there has been and checking up on the calves what are we doing with our 2021 calves this is the biggest crop of calves we've had this year uh seven we started off with two in my my second year and then we've just grown since then so that's exciting and we just hope to continue that trend and keep growing which is fun and one of the main goals here across Denver's bison is grow the herd these are four yearling heifers that we got separated and I put in here. Just like these guys, next summer, hopefully by this time, they'll be coming in heat and we'll be able to breed, which is really exciting because hopefully, whether they'll be with Big Joe or with Dunbar, you've got four more heifers right here that can hopefully and will breed next year, which means we could possibly have Dakota, my other one, and Eleanor having babies. You're looking at a total of 13 babies possibly. That's possible, that's 100% calving rate right there if all the females had their calves. So who knows, that's what we want. That's what everybody wants. Thank you guys for watching us. Dunbar is doing great. He's hanging out up here with his females. I did put some diatomaceous earth out on his wallows too as well. Stay tuned, Got uh, we're taking Lumpy to the vet. I'm gonna bring you along just reminding you about Lumpy, we're gonna take him a, on a trip to Oklahoma State, my alma mater, and to see what we can do. And I'm kinda anxious to get in there and let them put that on him, that ultrasound on him, just to see if it's possible and see how bad the damage really is. It's a step, we don't know what the result will be, but it's a step somewhere. So I'll bring you along with that. Thank you guys for watching us.